this video is my standard introduction to the energy unit. And it's not something I usually would do outside of class. I'm recording this in January 2018 because I'm awaiting the birth of my second child. And there's a good chance I won't be in class when we start this. But what I like to do here is I like to have a class discussion about what is energy. What words do you think of when you hear the word energy? I feel that energy is a concept everyone thinks they know something about. And when you hear the word, it inspires a lot of discussion. So what I typically do is I have students spend five minutes writing down 15 words that come to mind. And they can be anything that pops into their head. We then have a hour long discussion about these words. And I put them on the board in categories. So students will say their words and I'll put some right here. And I'll put some right here and others right there. And then we have a big discussion about what are the different categories. So in this video, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put up the categories as they usually form, and I'm gonna put up a lot of the common words. After that, we'll talk about them, and we'll try to put them all in perspective. So here would be a good sample list of energy types um, that a class would come up with. And we usually start out by hearing kinetic and potential. That's something left over from physical science or middle school science. Kinetic being the energy of motion. And potential, most students seem to remember it's something to do with stored energy. Energy that uh, is in a system and it's been put there. Generally, potential energy means you've done work on something and you've moved it in a direction it wouldn't go naturally, against a force. So I did work against gravity here and that energy is stored. If I drop this calculator, it comes back. There's lots of forces you can do work against. You can pull a bow and arrow. That would be a spring potential force, so a bungee cord or a rubber band. Um, there's also chemical potential energy. So we can force atoms in arrangements they don't want to go. The two broad classes of chemicals that have potential energy, stuff we eat, food, and stuff we burn, fuel. Uh, a lot of students remember ATP from biology. ATP is a biomolecule that contains a lot of energy, and, and you know our cells uh, use that to carry out their functions. There's other energy types. We have nuclear. It's energy stored in atoms nucleuses. It's actually mass, and the Einstein equation relates the two. E equals mc squared. Um, there's solar, energy of light. And there's thermal. Uh, we know things that are hot have energy. So everything I got here in orange, we typically call those energy types. In green, I've got things like heat, work, electricity, light, sound. Those are ways in which energy moves from one object or one location to another. So we'll talk about all these as ways of transferring energy. In red, I've got uh, transformations in energy that are, that are important. Photosynthesis, that's when a plant turns light into uh, chemical energy. It uses the energy in light to do work to make certain chemicals. Burning, that's when we light chemicals on fire and uh, we release heat and uh, turn them into different chemicals. A power plant takes one form of energy and usually transforms it into electricity. And then life you can look at is like this too. It's a, a, a life form is an object that takes uh, chemical potential energy and transforms it into motion and heat and lots of other things. So these are things that transform energy. Some people know that the calorie is the unit, one of the units of energy. That's what we typically use to measure the energy in foods in the United States. The standard unit is the joule, the SI unit. So a lot of other countries don't have calories. They have joules or kilojoules on their labels. <coughs> Excuse me. Also, the calorie on our food labels is actually a kilocalorie, a thousand calories. That way, your 200 calorie bottle of Coke doesn't look like 200,000 calories and make you not want to drink it. But these are units we use to measure energy. Up here are ones that people are always sheepish about saying, but, but generally, people in society use these to mean energy. I put coffee, caffeine, drugs energy drinks. 
But those are, are all actually drugs. They're, they're chemicals that change the physiological response of the body. Uh, we typically think energy means being alert and focused. Well, not really, to be honest. Anything that has calories has energy. If you go have a huge, huge dinner, uh, and then you want to get work done after and you start to get kind of sleepy, you actually took in energy. But your body's reacting to the fact you ate food, and it's making you feel drowsy and tired. So how you feel is not really related to energy. That's more of an anatomy question. Um, we won't talk about this one, but we hopefully will talk about all the other types. Oh, have to mention power and the unit watt. That is the speed of energy. So the watt is actually the joule per second. So you can think of power as being like how fast you use energy. Just like velocity is how fast do you cover distance. We'll definitely talk about that. So bottom line is you guys know a lot about energy. You can name a lot of words. Uh, this would be a pretty typical class. So I hope this discussion has made sense and that you sort of know how these words are all a constellation that goes together. What I haven't done is told you what energy is. And that's because it has a very interesting definition that requires a lot more learning. Energy is the ability to do work. Not the world's awesomest definition because it raises the question, what is work? And that's what we're going to have to go to next. Generally speaking, work is the ability to put a force on an object move at a distance. And if you have energy, you can do that. So we'll look a little bit closer at work, and then we'll start to investigate types of energy. We're going to pay special attention to kinetic and gravitational potential in all the classes. Uh, AP physics will look a little more closely at spring potential as well. And then knowing chemical potential is really essential for understanding biology and chemistry. We'll try to make ties to that as well.